Thank you, Minister. We move on to the next item of business, which is a statement by John Swinney on the launch of the Education Governance Review. The Deputy First Minister and Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement. Deputy First Minister. President Officer, last week in this chamber, the First Minister spoke about the defining mission of this government, delivering equity and excellence in education. Excellence, we will raise the bar for all, and equity, we will close the attainment gap. <coughs> And we have put specific timescales against our work on the attainment gap. We will make significant progress within this Parliament and substantially eliminate that gap by the end of the next Parliament. Presiding officer, we have set ourselves the task of ensuring that every child, no matter where they are from or how well off their family is, has the same opportunities and an equal chance to succeed. Avis Glaze, the world-renowned educationalist who now sits on our International Council of Education Advisors, Put it simply, poverty is not destiny. Our task is to make sure that that is the case in Scotland. And we have made a strong start. We have expanded our attainment challenge to £750 million over the life of this Parliament, providing direct support to those schools with the biggest attainment gap challenge. We have introduced the National Improvement Framework. Standardised assessment will be introduced to inform teacher judgment about the performance of young people. A new transparent reporting on school performance will allow us to measure the attainment gap more accurately and set clear targets for closing it. We have also moved decisively to free teachers to teach by removing unnecessary bureaucracy and workload. We have provided a definitive statement of priorities for Scotland's schools, setting out clearly and concisely what teachers should and shouldn't be focusing on. It will empower them to spend their time teaching and giving our children the best possible opportunities to learn. These are strong foundations for Scottish education. In its review of Scottish education, the OECD found Scotland is above the international average in reading and science, that attainment is improving, that Scottish schools are inclusive, and that our children are resilient and have positive attitudes towards school. This is a testament to the bold reform of Curriculum for Excellence and the energy applied by many to ensure success for Scotland's young people. But the OECD also told us to continue to be bold. Andy Hargreaves of the OECD review team set out the challenge at the recent education summit, telling us not only to remain ahead of the global curve in education, but actually become the curve that others will refer to around the world. We accept that challenge. We will create the world leading education system our children and young people deserve. Our next step, presiding officer, in that challenge is to ask ourselves, how should Scottish school education be run? That is what our governance review will seek to answer over the coming months. But we do not ask that question in a vacuum. Today, I will set out our vision for the most critically important part of our early years and school education system, our teachers, practitioners, and their relationship with our children. That relationship is at the, the heart of every story of success. In every school that succeeds, you find great teachers able to reach out and touch the lives of the children in their classrooms. In every story of a child lifted out of poverty by the power of education, you find teachers and the bond they formed with that child. Nothing is more critical. And in the 118 days since becoming Education Secretary, I have been deeply impressed by the excellent work I have seen from teachers and early years practitioners across the country. But I have also heard about the barriers and challenges they face to delivering great education. So our guiding principle for the way our schools are run is simple. Decisions should be taken at school level. That will be the presumption, and we will place it at the heart of this review. We want to empower our teachers and our early years workers to make the best decisions for children and young people. They have the expertise we need. They are the professionals charged with using the power of education to change a child's destiny. We will place them at the heart of a system that makes decisions about children's learning and school life within the schools themselves, supported by parents and the local community. This is a vision of empowerment and devolution. Devolution from local authorities to schools, teachers, head teachers, parents and communities. Devolution from a national to a local or regional level. Let us ensure that decisions about a child's learning are taken as close to a child as possible. Devolution of decision-making has to be allied to devolution of resources. 
We have begun this process with the allocation of £100 million from council tax reform directly to schools to support their work to close the equity gap. But we are committed to go much further. We are committed to establishing a fair and transparent needs-based funding formula for schools. We will consult on proposals for a funding formula in March 2017, but this review offers an opportunity to comment on how funding can be made fairer and support decision-making by teachers at a school level. Presiding officer, we know that improvement in education is driven by cooperation and collaboration, not competition or marketisation. This government is committed to a publicly funded, comprehensive education system which enables every child and young person to achieve. We will not, we will never go down the divisive academy model. And we will never allow children to be labelled as failures at the age of 11. There will be no policy of selection or grammar schools in Scotland. Our reform will be based on evidence of what works, not right-wing ideological dogma. The evidence shows that systematic collaborative engagement at every level of education is what builds capacity and delivers the best outcomes for children and young people. School clusters are a way in which schools can work together and we want to hear how this type of collaboration and others can be encouraged so that it is supported and sustained. By working together, we can achieve more. We will not set school against school, parent against parent and pupil against pupil. We will bring people together to pursue the world-class education that every child deserves. Presiding officer, I have set out our presumption that decisions should be taken at school level. That will lead inevitably to some elements of our system that will have to be the responsibility of other organisations. The question this review poses is what elements and where should those responsibilities sit? Sometimes the answer will be obvious. For example, there will always be the need for a national examination body. No one would suggest schools should set their own hires. But there are some elements that will be a matter of genuine debate. Some of the support schools need is best delivered at a local or a regional level. Currently, many of these services are delivered by local authorities. Let me be clear, local authorities will continue to exercise democratic control over Scottish education at a local level. But we must question how the role of local government can become more effective. Devolving responsibilities to our schools means we need to question the support provided at every level of our education system to ensure that it delivers what teachers need. Whilst there are some examples of partnership working across local authorities, the OECD highlighted the need for more effective partnership and collaboration between local authorities. This government will therefore introduce new educational regions to ensure good practice is shared across education and to ensure we deliver best value. The Governance Review offers the opportunity to shape this approach. Local authorities are accountable to their electorates. I am accountable to the electorate and to this chamber. Schools should be primarily be accountable to parents and their local communities. We need a system of accountability, a system of governance which is clear to parents, teachers and communities, to every one of us, whether we have a formal role in, an edu in our education system or a stake in its success. The Governance Review is our opportunity to make that a reality. I want to hear views from across every part of Scotland in the weeks and the months ahead. I want to hear from children and young people, from parents, teachers, practitioners and the wider community. There will be opportunities to engage directly with the questions in the review and online. We will be publishing information about engagement events on our website and these will take place around the country. I will also meet monthly with my counterpart in COSLA, Councillor Stephanie Primrose, during the course of the review to share emerging findings and build consensus where possible. I plan to spend a significant amount of time over the next three months talking and listening to teachers, children and young people and partners about how education is run. Presiding officer, I want to hear from members of this chamber and I invite every member of this parliament to engage and to contribute to this review. Closing the attainment gap and raising standards for all, delivering excellence and equity for all of our children and young people is our national mission as a government. We are ready to take the next steps in making Scotland's school education world class. I invite everyone in this chamber to join us in that effort. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I call Liz Smith. Thank you, uh, Deputy First Minister. 
and thank you for prior sight of the statement. Uh, the announcement, of course, that is central uh, to this statement is on page six when we learn that there will be the introduction of new educational regions operating uh, above local authorities. Would the Cabinet Secretary accept that this looks a little bit like centralisation of education, which seems to be at odds with the statement on page three when he says that decisions should be taken at school level? Secondly, on the crucial related funding issue, the Scottish Government appears to be suggesting that the £100 million attainment fund will be paid for by council tax and then allocated to pupils according to whatever the Scottish Government sees as the appropriate measure for deprivation. Could he clarify exactly whether that money raised from council tax will be spent in that particular local authority, in the relevant region, or by a free-for-all system overseen by the Scottish Government? And finally, the Cabinet Secretary says that he wants schools that work and deliver good results. So do we. So can I ask him, does he intend to make the legislative changes to allow more Jordan Hill type schools or schools where parents want state education but not provided by local authorities? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, the, on the first of Liz Smith's questions, the uh, argument about educational regions is uh, a direct response from the government to the OECD challenge to us to encourage more collaboration within the education system in Scotland. So when Liz Smith says that these would be regions operating above local authorities, I would encourage her to think of the concept as cooperation between local authorities. So I want to make it absolutely clear, I do not want to run every school in the country. This is, that is not the purpose of this review. This is about discussing what are the right powers and responsibilities to be exercised at school level to ensure that our teaching leadership in whom we are investing, frankly, our hopes as a country in educating our young people are able to take the decisions that best suit the needs of their children in that individual school. And our message about um, the collaboration that needs to exist between authorities is about encouraging joint working and collaboration as we are seeing in certain parts of the country between individual local authorities to ensure that the direct teaching experience of pupils is enhanced by the adding of value uh, by a greater collaboration across the education service. So the government's agenda is, um, I would characterise it as a combination of the encouragement of decentralisation and the encouragement of collaboration within education. Those are the values at the heart of the governance review that I'm setting out today. Now, in relation to the uh, £100 million to be raised from the council tax, the resources raised by each local authority by the changes that are made in council tax it will, of course, be collected in their entirety in those local authority areas. But clearly, there will be a distribution of resources to ensure that the 100 million pounds is allocated to support young people who um, are living in poverty and who require additional support to address the consequences of their background in, uh, in closing the attainment gap. That was what the government set out to the public in the election campaign and that is exactly what we will make provision for. And finally, um, I suppose this is a point of um, uh, of, of great debate within the, uh, the review, but there is also a measure of agreement. Uh, I, like Liz Smith, want schools that work. Of course I want schools that work. And I see much excellence in the schools in Scotland today, and I think it's right that that is acknowledged in the statement today. There is much excellence in our school system today. And what I want to make sure is that every single school in which the young people of Scotland are entering is an excellent school. And I want to empower the schools of Scotland to enable that to be the case. So the debate we're going to have is how do we take the necessary steps in reforming the governance of Scottish education to make sure that we create excellent schools in every single part of the country to, make, to guarantee that young people can fulfil their educational potential. That is the question at the heart of the review and that is what the government will engage on in the course of the next few months. Can I encourage members to press their request to speak buttons? I call on Ian Gray to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Ian Gray. 
Thank you, President Officer, and uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement. Empowering teachers, parents and communities to achieve excellence and equity in education <clears throat> is a laudable aim and one which we share. But we recognise uh, that we must have enough teachers and enough resources in our schools to properly pursue it. Today, uh, we were told that councils might face cuts of £1 billion by the end of this Parliament. So as I've asked often before, will the Cabinet Secretary commit to using the powers of this Parliament to protect school budgets as he reviews their governance? For Mr Swinney has made clear uh, in his statement that local authorities will continue to exercise democratic control over Scottish education at a local level. And that is very, very welcome. Welcome also is his ruling out of selection and the grammar school model. Welcome to his ruling out of the academy model here in Scotland. But I ask him for clarity and completeness, for he failed to do this in response to Ms Smith. Will he rule out the idea that schools be able to opt out from local authority control? Cabinet Secretary. On the, um, the point that Ian Gray raises, first of all, on um, there being appropriate resources, he will, of course, have heard from the government of the position that we set out at the, um, at the outset of the election campaign, of the propositions we would put to the people of Scotland. The government is now fulfilling those commitments to, uh, in the governance review and in the agenda that I've set out in the government's delivery plan and we will be ensuring that new resources are allocated to education to support the achievements of the government's agenda in closing the attainment gap. That, is the, that was the promise the government made at the election and that is the promise that we are going to fulfil by injecting new resources into Scottish education. And it is important that we take those decisions to ensure that the support is in place to assist us in tackling the attainment gap within Scottish education. And that will, and the, the welcome that Mr Gray has given to a number of the provisions that I've set out today, um, I, I think should be extended to the additional resources that the government is putting in place in this respect. Now on his second question about governance, um, it is not part of my plan that schools should opt out of local authority control. That is not part of my plan. What I want to make sure is that schools have got the necessary powers and responsibilities to be able to create excellence, to take the decisive decisions that deliver on the quality of education and the attainment of young people within those schools. So my plans are about making sure that schools are part of the democratic fibre and fabric of Scottish society, that they are operating within the local authority context. But I want to make sure that the school leadership of Scotland are able to take the decisive decisions that will transform the life chances of young people in Scotland. And that strikes me as an agenda that can be broadly supported within Scotland. I'm sure the Chamber is very appreciative of the Cabinet Secretary's thoughtful remarks, but I just point out there are 10 speakers trying to get in in the interest of brevity. Jenny Gilruth. Sir, we know that greater parental and community involvement has been shown to promote children's attainment and achievement. And I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's plans to involve parents and the wider community more with this review. Could the Cabinet Secretary confirm that teachers, parents and communities will also be involved in the creation of a fair funding formula for our schools? But on all of these questions, Presiding Officer, uh, I'm determined to engage widely within Scotland. It's important that we, we have a broad debate about these questions to make sure the government's thinking and its approach is informed by um, a wide selection of opinion. And I can give the assurance that we will take um, every effort to capture that input and then to report to Parliament on, any, uh, on the changes that we intend to make as a consequence of that dialogue. Thank you. Ross Thompson, to be followed by James Dorn. Ross Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, not to labour the point too much, but could the Cabinet Secretary please clarify that if there is a school who is producing top class results where parents themselves want to opt out 
of the local authority, will he allow them to do so? Cabinet Secretary. I, I, I said to, in my statement, uh, I made a number of commitments in my statement about the uh, centrality of the government's view uh, about the, the establishment of a comprehensive education system in Scotland and an education system that is under democratic control. And I've just reiterated those points to Mr Gray. So my objective is to empower schools to be able, uh, within a comprehensive education system, to deliver the excellence that every single child in Scotland has a right to expect. And the governance review that we are discussing is about how we can empower schools to enable them to do that so that wherever a child um, lives and goes to school within Scotland, they can do so um, with access to an excellent education system um, that has their interests, their needs and their aspirations at the heart of its design. James Dornan to be followed by Daniel Johnson. James Dornan. Thank you, President. No, sir. <coughs> I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's commitment to stay away from the academy model and grammar schools. And would he agree with me that the conclusion of a recent Institute for Fiscal Studies report, which stated that grammars can stretch the brightest pupils but seem likely to come at the cost of increasing inequality, just shows how right that decision is? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, I started my statement by making reference to the importance of um, achieving excellence and equity within Scottish education. And uh, those values, those aspirations are right at the heart of the agenda that we will take forward. We are determined to ensure that there is um, a, every effort taken to focus on our mission of closing the attainment gap in Scottish education. And I do not believe for a moment that the closing of the attainment gap in Scotland would be um, made any easier. In fact, I think it would be made a great deal more difficult by undertaking some of the reforms that we hear of been taking place elsewhere. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Gillian Martin. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I don't know how many times the Deputy First Minister mentioned devolution in his statement, but I certainly welcome his conversion to the cause. But with regard to the powers that he's considering handing down to both regions and to schools. Currently, teachers' pay and conditions are negotiated and set out nationally. Will the Deputy First Minister confirm that those will continue to be set at a national level? Cabinet Secretary. The, 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 my, my presumption in this, uh, uh, in this governance review is that uh, teachers' terms and conditions will remain a national issue to be resolved. But what I want to make sure is that we have as open and participative a debate about the factors that will make a real difference at school level in ensuring the creation and the delivery of excellence and equity for all within the education system. So we, I, I've deliberately set the consultation exercise as an open consultation to enable that debate to be had within Scotland about what are the right levers to be located at school level uh, to determine how we can best improve the per performance within Scottish education and to deliver on the expectations of young people in every part of the country. Gillian Martin to be followed by Tavish Scott. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary says that he wants to engage with as many people as possible and hear views from across every part of Scotland through this review. I think it's crucial that the young people themselves have, had to have their say, and uh, I, I'm pleased to hear that the Cabinet Secretary confirmed this in his, his speech just now. I'm interested in what plans there are to facilitate this, and if he can elaborate on this further. Secretary. Obviously, a range of different uh, engagement opportunities will be taken forward to ensure that we capture the views of young people. Young people will be the ones who can most effectively tell us about the um, the issues they face in the, in the development of their educational journey and it's important that we use every um, mechanism we have available to, to capture their input. There will be specific consultation um, events and um, measures taken to capture that input from young people and to inform the discussions that we take forward as a government. 
Tavish Scott to be followed by Colin Beattie. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for uh, a copy of his statement in advance. If the big idea for Scottish education is educational regions, will they be imposed? And have ministers not forgotten the human, the human and financial cost of centralising police? Why was there no mention of Education Scotland in his statement today? Would he agree to separate school inspectors from ministerial policy and advice? And on funding, a needs-based funding formula for schools is very different from government funding to deliver education in a council area. Isn't that centralisation of funding by another way? Cabinet Secretary. Um, on, the, um, uh, on the first point that uh, Tavish Scott raised, um, the, the whole question of um, educational regions is, as I explained to Liz Smith, a product of the issues raised with us by the OECD review, which encouraged us to support a more collaborative model for the delivery of education and they encourage the, um, the, the sharing of best practice and expertise around different areas of the country and across different parts of the education system. So what we're trying to do in the review is respond to that challenge from the OECD because what the OECD review did was it, yes, it said that Scottish education was strong but it said we had to continue to reform Scottish education and we must respond to that challenge from the OECD. And on the question of how educational regions will come about, there is already, as I indicated in one of my earlier answers, collaboration emerging between different local authorities in the delivery of education around the country. And that is a discussion we want to engage in with local authorities. That is why I'm going to see on a regular basis my counterpart in COSLA to advance these discussions. Now, on the second point uh, in relation to the role of Education Scotland, um, Mr Scott will see, I appreciate there's not been much time to uh, consume the, the consultation document, but the, the document raises um, the role of different bodies at different levels within Scotland. So, um, th there is adequate opportunity for these issues to be examined and tested as part of the consultation exercise. And in relation to the needs-based formula, um, uh, the, the, the complete text that I used was that it had to be a fair needs-based formula. That means it has to take into account the variety of different issues that, has to be that have to be taken into account in arriving at an appropriate funding formula that meets the the needs and the challenges and the aspirations of different, uh, uh, of different areas of the country and within the education system. So the government will consult on that issue in March of next year. We will take forward that debate and that discussion, but I stress that any analysis of this point has to be underpinned by an acceptance of the point that I made, that there has to be a fair approach to that, uh, that, that needs-based funding formula. Colin Beattie to be followed by Graeme Simpson. As the Cabinet Secretary rightly points out, there are very strong foundations for Scottish education. Would he agree with the Director General of the CBI, who recently said, and I quote, on qualifications, Scotland has a proud record, and again, Scotland's curriculum for excellence is leading the way? I think the, the, well, the, the, there's a, a very strong body of opinion that indicates that Curriculum for Excellence, not least of which is the OECD review, that Curriculum for Excellence has been a bold and a successful reform. The challenge is that we have to make sure that Curriculum for Excellence works effectively alongside other policy interventions that the government makes, particularly in relation to skills on developing Scotland's young workforce. And the work that Mr Hepburn and myself are taking forward to integrate the uh, school education and the skills agenda with um, the work that Somerville has taken forward with the higher education sector is vitally important uh, to ensure that we are, and the, the further education sector is vitally important to ensure that all of our interventions are aligned to create the strongest skill, skills base that will be relevant and applicable for the development of the Scottish economy. Graeme Simpson to be followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you. Um, the Cabinet Secretary wants councils to collect £100 million, pounds, which he will then divvy up. He will form new national uh, and regional bodies. Why is that not more centralisation? Have a second. Uh, well, the first thing I'd say to, uh, to Mr Simpson is that there's a, a, a certain um, democratic question in here where the government went to the electorate to seek a mandate 
for these proposals and the government was given a mandate to take forward these proposals. And we're now engaging in a consultation about the implementation of the manifesto commitments that we have made. And I invite and I've invited local government to take part in the dialogue around the, uh, the, the, the pursuit of this agenda. Um, I commit myself to engaging purposefully in that agenda today and to ensure that we make the necessary progress in uh, delivering excellence and equity within our education system because those are the, 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 the values and the aspirations that underpin the policy commitments around uh, reforming the council tax to generate this revenue and also uh, reforming the structures of Scottish education to deliver the collaboration that I've talked about in response to the OECD review. Monica Lennon to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I draw the Chamber's attention to my register of interest as I am a local councillor in South Lanarkshire Council. Today's announcement acknowledges local authority control of schools, but surely signals a diminished role for local government in the delivery of education. What assurances can the Deputy First Minister give that the creation of educational regions will not put pressure on or divert vital funding away from local government budgets and not lead to unintended bureaucracy? Well, I certainly will be taking steps to make sure that um, the reforms do not generate unintended bureaucracy because I'm spending a very significant proportion of my life removing unintended bureaucracy from the system as we currently stand. The arguments about educational regions are about collaboration to encourage educational excellence. That's the purpose of the reforms. They are not to overlay bureaucracy. They are to ensure that we have the resources and the capability available to enhance the quality of Scottish education. That is the purpose of the reform agenda. That's what the OECD challenged us to consider and that is what the government is consulting about today. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. I'm extremely pleased to see the Scottish Government delivering on yet another manifesto commitment and continuing to make progress on giving every child the same opportunity to succeed. Could this Cabinet Secretary outline how long the review will last for and what role the National Improvement Framework will have in supporting parents and communities? Cabinet Secretary. The National Improvement Framework is predicated on a number of key themes, one of which is parental involvement, and I will have the opportunity to discuss many of these questions with the National Parent Forum for Scotland when I meet uh, with the forum this coming Saturday. Um, the National Improvement Framework also provides the, um, the, the, the guidance uh, around how we take forward this agenda, um, how it supports in every respect the uh, closing of the attainment gap and the steps that we set out in the governance review today are integral uh, to ensuring the uh, message of excellence and equity that's at the heart of the national improvement framework is delivered as a consequence of the, uh, the, the measures we take forward today. My apologies to Ross Greer not being able to call him. My thanks to the Cabinet Secretary for his admirable acceleration.